This is probably the best news about coffee that you're going to hear today. Now I'm going to read a scary quote to you, okay? And I want you to see if this is a way that you want to live your life. You tell me. Diminished strength, endurance, and reduced physiological function that increases an individual's vulnerability for increased dependency or death. That sounds awful. That sounds like basically you're losing all your ability to take care of yourself, right? Who cares if you're living to 100 if you can't take care of yourself? You can't do the things you love. I would much rather live to 90 and be active and be able to move and not be frail than live to 100 and have my kids take care of me. I don't want that. I'd rather be active and out with them seeing the world. Now, where does coffee come into play with this? Well, we're gonna to get to this because this is really exciting and I promise you it's about coffee. But we have to lay the groundwork first, so stick with me. I put a link down below for 30% off of Seed's Daily Symbiotic. I don't really recommend probiotics very often, but Seed has a very, very interesting one and that's a 30% off discount link. So they have a capsule inside of a capsule. So it has a prebiotic and a probiotic in one. So if you're trying to really make a dent in your gut microbiome and make a serious change, that's probably the only probiotic I would ever recommend. So again, that link down below will get your hands on that for a 30% off discount, and then you can try taking it every day. So because it's a symbiotic, that means that it has like a multi-stage delivery system. So it has a prebiotic that breaks down, which is going to help feed the gut bacteria and help feed the probiotic, which breaks down a little bit later in digestion with their dual capsule technology. So anyhow, that link is down below for 30% off with seed. By 2030, one in six people are going to be over 60. By 2050, we're gonna double, where over two billion people on this planet are gonna be over 60. What that means is we have a lot of people getting older. And if we have a lot of people that are becoming frail and a lot of people that are weak and dependent on younger people, we're gonna run into a serious flipping problem. And it's not far away. So increasing the physical ability and reducing frailty becomes imperative. Now we do know that diet quality is inversely correlated with frailty. The higher the quality diet, the more protein, the less frailty. Okay, but what about caffeine? What about coffee? Well, according to a brand new study published in 2023 in JAMDA, it turns out that drinking four or more cups of coffee led to the lowest risk of physical frailty amongst caffeine drinkers. Now, this wasn't a small study either. It was 12,583 people, and they monitored them over a long period of time with a mean age of 53 at baseline and a mean age of 73 by the third follow-up. So they followed them for a long time. So the more coffee they consumed, the less physically frail they were. Now, tea also lowered the odds, but not quite as much as coffee in this case. Now, coffee is much higher caffeine concentration than tea, but it might not just be the caffeine. However, in this particular study, and we're gonna talk about more, there's other studies that compound this. In this particular study, more caffeine led to a better score on what is called the time up and go test. This is a funny sounding test and it is kind of silly, but it's practical. It's sitting in a chair and then they time you how long it takes you to get up, walk three meters, turn around, walk three meters back, turn around and sit your butt in the chair again. That is the most practical thing that I could think of. My point in saying this is that caffeine seems to have an impact, but we have to look at some other literature too. So we look at the mechanisms. There's three potential mechanisms here. Number one, the antioxidant effects of coffee and tea, the polyphenols, the chlorogenic acid, okay, the diterpenes, the catechins in tea, the epicatechins in tea, these have anti-inflammatory effects. Modulating inflammation could be a huge factor when it comes down to having the strength not being in pain to be able to move. So from a metabolic standpoint, you might even preserve more muscle that way. So that is a huge factor, and I think we should not throw that away. But then we look at number two, which looks more at rodent model literature, suggests that caffeine intake leads to more strength, more DNA synthesis, but also better grip strength. Like overall, we're seeing this. And this comes as a result of decreases in inflammation, increases in periodic IGF-1, so allowing for the proper growth. See. Longevity really is a balance of like pro-growth and autophagy and, and breakdown, right? If you have all pro-growth, you're gonna burn hot, die young. But if you have a balance of it, it's great. 
But if you have no growth, then you're gonna become frail and you're gonna die that way. There's also an increase in AKT signaling, which makes it so that the muscle cells can actually grow and fuse the satellite cells. So that's one piece, but the big piece is number three, and it probably makes the most sense. There are studies that demonstrate that one to two cups of coffee lead to a 17% higher likelihood of meeting physical guidelines for the day. What does that mean? It means when you drink coffee, you have energy. And if that energy is getting you up off the couch and you're moving around, that is probably why you're less frail. So when you look at the big overarching piece, it's like, hmm, would you rather like abstain from coffee and potentially fall victim to like being weak and tired? Or do you wanna kinda oversee that or overshadow that, supersede it by having some caffeine, even if your body's a little tired and going out and pushing it and becoming strong and not so frail? That's an actual question. That's not me taking one side. Because on one hand, you wanna listen to your body, but on the other hand, like, we have technology, we have science, maybe we can use it to our advantage and we can remain strong. We sort of game the system a little bit. But I think it's a combination of all three. Now, let's look at some more data because what's really interesting is if you look at Spain, Spain did not have the same effect. This, the Spaniards did not seem to have a reduction in frailty with their coffee intake. But there's one glaring thing that we have to look at. The Spaniards tend to drink a lot of unfiltered coffee. Unfiltered coffee might negate the effects. Now, this is just you know, some literature talking, but let's look. The European Journal of Preventative Cardiology published a paper looking at 508,000 coffee drinkers. No small data. What they found is that unfiltered coffee led to a 15% increased risk of premature death and a 12 to 20% increased risk of cardiovascular disease. What the heck's going on? Well, it may have to do with unfiltered coffee having more of what is called cafestol and cowiol which are compounds that can be absorbed into our body and potentially increase the accumulation of plasma lipids. So cholesterol, triglycerides. I don't know how that impacts like mobility and frailty, but I mean, it could increase inflammation, which is going to impact mobility and frailty. Now it's funny because one of the highest polyphenol, caffeine, antioxidant rich coffees that you can have is instant coffee. It's essentially concentrated and ultra filtered. And it's funny because we think of it as processed and not good, but it's actually as pure as it gets in a lot of ways. And I have no fiduciary obligation to talk about any instant coffee. It's just the simple fact. Maybe that's why the old guy in the Mojave Desert that drinks beer and coffee all day seems to randomly live to 103 versus someone here doing everything right perfectly and dying at 80. It's just an interesting thing, but. Don't be afraid of your coffee, especially it gives you the energy to be you. As always, keep it locked in here on our channel. See you tomorrow.